Now, Eye on the Arts with Adam Sawatsky on CFAX 1070. Well, thank you for staying with us. This is Hour 2 of Eye on the Arts on CFAX 1070. I'm Adam Sawatsky from CTV News. And get ready to be squirrelized or squirreled or something. What should we call it? What's the verb here, Carolyn? <laughs> Squirrel bombed. I like that. Victoria painter Carolyn Yardley has been squirrel bombing canvases around the Capitol, capturing the imagination of art fans thanks to her images of people with squirrel heads or squirrels with people's bodies or perhaps just characters revealing their true selves. Like any interesting art, when she squirrel bombs something, her work is open to many interpretations. And you can meet these creatures for yourself later this month for Yardley's new exhibit, a retrospective, Romancing the Squirrel. Hello to you. Hello. Thank you, Adam, for having me. Is it really Squirrel Bombed? Is that what you call it? Is the show itself is called, oh, the show or? <laughs> Just what you do. <laughs> uh, squirrelify, squirrelification. Ooh, those are good, too. <laughs> do you remember the first squirrel you ever saw? Um, I do, because it was an injured squirrel that was in our yard. So that's actually. Uh, How old were you? Oh, uh, well, oh, the very first squirrel of my life. Yeah. Oh, no, I don't. Okay. I don't. So, so the first memorable squirrel the first, was injured. Mm -hmm. You were an adult? The very first squirrel that I remember probably would have been my mum talking about a, a bird's nest or bird house that my brother had built. Mm -hmm. And a squirrel had gnawed the hole big enough for itself and it had barricaded it with leaves. So that's the, probably the first squirrel story that I remember. And, and was what, were, my mother's what were your thoughts about that? I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. Like, way to take over a house. So you were on the squirrel's side. <laughs> well, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, some people, you know, well, your brother, I'm sure, was upset. So that no, he thought that was pretty cool, too. Was that good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. That was all good. That kind of aggression was, you know, looked <laughs> upon as a favorable <laughs> thing in our household. <laughs> <laughs> well, what was it like growing up in your household? Have you, have you always been artistic? Have you always been creative? Did you paint when you were young? I did. I always, um, I was making costumes. I used the sewing machine quite a bit to make different clothes and outfits. Um, I I would always win poster contests, so the Oak Bay poster contest was mine to be had um, several years in elementary school. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the uh, Shoppers Drug Mart, you know, <laughs> color in. Yeah. I've got uh, the big, huge stuffed toys from that. So, yes, I would say that I've always been um, artistic. Did you ever win a stuffed squirrel? No, I didn't. I got a cat and a bunny. <laughs> and did you do anything aggressive to that to creatively transform them? Uh, the black cat's a little bent. Okay. And I don't know what happened to the bunny. <laughs> So let's go back to that squirrel that was injured. Why, why, why was that moment so memorable for uh, you? Well, he was uh, in the front yard and he was having trouble being able to eat. So he was falling back. It was funny. Terrible to say. So we were having a bit of a laugh at uh, an injured squirrel that was having trouble feeding himself. Okay. Which then parlayed into us trying to help him. Uh, be able okay. to take care of There you of go. You just, you just re redeemed yourself with that story. Because <laughs> I know there were some people that were like, what? She's laughing at a hurt squirrel. I know. Well, if you saw, saw him fall over, it was... Yeah. <laughs> in sort of a slapstick kind of way. It was. It was. <laughs> I'm assuming you appreciate black humor. I do. Very yeah. dark. Yeah. Why is that? Um, <clears throat> well, I'm probably the kind of person that would have a bit of chuckle at a funeral. Yeah. So um, I can't explain why I find these things funny, but um, that just happens to be the way I roll. <laughs> People that I know that that laugh at you know what culture you know what society considers inappropriate moments that they're often laughing at, at the artifice of the situation. They're laughing at at you know the rules that we all follow. Is 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 that similar for you? I'd say that's probably a pretty good um, description. Yeah. I find some of the things to be absurd, and so you know, through the absurdity of you know life and death and all of the injuries that we receive along the way, you have to be able to. Um, realize that there's something bigger or there's something more important happening and uh to find some humor through any of that darkness i think it's really important <laughs> and i'm there to provide that you're there to provide that <laughs> are, are we seeing that in your work because oftentimes we see these creatures these characters um yeah, their, their clothing i mean they're they're wearing the clothes of people that one would think would follow the rules in society Yet they have these surreal squirrel heads and isn't attached that so to them. So true of people who do often wear clothes of approval in our society, and often they're, they're not. <laughs> uh, so yes, it does speak to that. Um, I, a fellow that I know, he teaches um, an acting school here in town, and he said about my paintings that while they look sugar sweet when you first look at them, mm -hmm. um, one of them in particular, say Space Hat Squirrel. Um, he said it always appears that maybe they're perhaps they're holding a knife behind their back. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So let's talk about uh, Space Hat Squirrel. Uh, you, you have this, uh, as, as far as the clothes are concerned, looks like this lovely uh, woman from the 50s mm -hmm. or, or, or 60s. Uh, she's wearing white gloves. And a, a three-string pearl necklace, a Chanel suit. And she has a, uh, a small golf, inverted golf tee on her head as an antenna. And she's also wearing a clear space hat, one that you would imagine that would come from a storybook in the 1950s. And a squirrel's head. And a squirrel face, yes. So what are you getting at? And I know this is a stupid question to ask an artist because I'm sure you want your audience to make up their own mind about <laughs> what the, your work is. But what were you thinking about as, as you painted this piece? Um, for me, well, I've always loved sci-fi and I've always loved space. But for me, part of the having the space hat on was um, the alienation that sometimes many of us feel regardless of you know, the clothes that we wear or the hair that we put on in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we're out there feeling completely alienated from everyone and everything. And so it speaks to those moments, those dark moments, that while we have a smile on our face and we're very animated, there may be quiet times where that's genuinely how we feel. There's going to be people out there, uh, hopefully, especially the last thing you said about the, those moments when we're alone and, and we feel disconnected or, or, or not included, hopefully people will relate to that. Because I know there are people that are listening to this conversation right now that are familiar with your work, fans of your work, are going to be going to the apartment gallery on, on the 22nd to, to purchase your work. There's also going to be people that have perhaps seen your work thinking, huh? <laughs> That's weird. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. But despite the fact that you, have, you, you create striking visuals, there, there is something universal that you're, you're talking about, that you're exploring. I try to, I've, I've started exploring more of a narrative of well, as well, too. So rather than mm. just doing portraits, I've brought more elements in. So I like allegory and narrative. So one of the other paintings that I ha uh, have that was on the cover of Focus uh, this month. So if anybody wants to grab a copy, there's also a two-page article in there. Um, <laughs> the, it has a girl on the front, a woman on the front. She's in a Victorian dress riding a butterfly with a bow and arrow. It's called Cupid and Psyche. And um, that speaks to, for me, with more of the narrative, of being able to be very focused and determined in what you desire and going after that with determination and, of course, wearing a Victorian dress while you do it. But it also speaks to the career change that I had and the... Um, the middle piece of putting those, sewing those two pieces together, going from one area of which I was an expert in to another area of art of which I was, you know, mm -hmm. a relative novice. Let's talk about that transition. What did you do before you, you, you focused on your, your art? I used to. I founded and uh, co-owned uh, with my business partner a company called Star Global. It was a um, software application web development company here in town for 14 years. And so... <clears throat> Uh, there was time to make a change. Uh, we started it when we were relatively young, and we had a staff of five downtown office and built the infrastructure um, that every, you know for a successful company. Mm -hmm. And it was time to make a change. So um, when why was there time to make a change? Well, um, the impetus for it was my business partner wanted to be able to focus more on programming mm. um, rather than human resources, and he wanted to be able to fulfill his passion. Yeah. And so I thought, well, what was mine? And I went to school 20, uh, I shouldn't say the number, yeah. blah, 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 blah. years ago, um, to go into visual arts yeah. and fine you, got, you have your Bachelor of Arts. You... And yeah, and, and I did art history as yeah. well, too. And I thought, you know, I was frightened to become an artist, a visual artist, that many years ago. And I decided that I'm not going to be scared of that anymore. I know how to build a business and I know how to navigate those fields. So I'm now going to put my creative pursuits into a different medium of painting and do that. Why, why were you afraid? Because I, I know there, again, there are a lot of people listening out there that are, are painting in their, their basements or painting in their garages or, you know, have this creative desire and because of life getting in the way they don't do that anymore so how did you overcome that what was your fear and how did you overcome it well the fear was how are you going to make a living and um uh i'm not sure what they're teaching in art school now but there wasn't a course on how are you going to make money at this and um and so a lot of my friends at the time they were like well what are you are you going to be an artist when you grow up and uh, anyway i was ended up being sidetracked ended up doing some psychology courses that wasn't for me either because i didn't uh intend in a profound i'm not that nice really i'm just kidding <laughs> i am but i'm not you, you would laugh at people <laughs> right well, when they were on the couch and right? then and then i'd be fired yeah and so <laughs> i uh 
Hi, then. Where were we? <laughs> you, you decided not to be a psychologist, but you realized, right. wow, I have won the, this this bunny and I've won this cat from That's doing right. from doing poster contests. Maybe the, there's something here. Well, the irony was that I ended up not getting a job anyway when I graduated from UVic. I ended up starting a company. Yeah. And Tim Berners-Lee invented the World Wide Web.